Welcome to the Park and Rec Recreation Commission meeting, uh, January, oops, already messed up. Ah. February. Uh, February 10th. And uh, may we have a roll call, Edith, please? Well, we need to do the pledge oh. first. Okay, I was just, see? <laughs> well, yeah, wait, real quick, Joni, before that, we need the government, the governor's ordinance. Oh, read. yes. Okay, guys. Okay. On March 3rd, 2020, Governor Newsom proclaimed a state of emergency due to COVID-19 and has issued executive order N-29-20 and approved AB-361, suspending provisions of the Brown Act allowing men meetings via teleconferencing and members of the public to observe and offer comments uh, telephonically or electronically. So now we can do the Pledge of Allegiance. Okay, shall we stand please? And I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Edith, now you can do the roll call. Yay. Thank you. Okay, Commissioners Steve Burbridge, Sadie Brown, Chuck Deckett. Here. Mary Heckle. Here. Ramesh Amadi? Yeah. Michael Vickers? Here. Chairperson Joni Fields? Here. Thank you. Okay, uh, we need to approve the uh, minutes of the January 13th meeting. Can we do agenda amendments real quick first, Joni? Sure. So I just have two mistakes under future agenda items, both Cricket and Pickleball have already come to Park and Rec. They will not be coming again. So um, if you could just remove those from future agenda items, please. Okay. And are those the only agenda? Um, um, items. items that need to be replaced. Those are the only ones from staff. Okay. So uh, anyone else have any uh, corrections that need to be done to the minutes? of uh, January 13th. No? Okay. Um, do I hear a motion to accept the minutes? I'll make a motion to accept the minutes of the January meeting. I'll second that. The um, minutes have been, Chuck did the a motion to approve the minutes with Michael, um, Second it. all those in favor? Aye. I think Thank you. all yeah. our hands. Yeah. Okay. They have been approved. Uh, okay, meeting to open to the public. Uh, inter introductions, awards, recognitions, or presentations. None from staff. Thank you. Uh, next, we have a public a comment from the audience regarding items not listed on the agenda. Speakers are encouraged to limit their comments to three minutes. We will have a um, clock that will be showing the three minutes and please um, make uh, your statements concise and be within the three minutes. First, Tony, can we also note that um, the commission cannot respond oh. or act on any of these items as they're not agendized? Thank you, Heidi, for reminding me. I've only, I've remembered that forever. Um, so, and then anyone um, who didn't fill out a speaker card but wants to speak can use the raise hand feature. Okay, so do I need to replay, re, re, um, repeat that? Not really. Okay. No. So our, our first speaker, Aaron. Our, our first speaker will be Cynthia Sean. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. 
Thank you. I am speaking in regards to putting a cricket field at Muirwood Community Park. I live two blocks from there, and I'm guessing that none of you actually live there. I reviewed the video of your November meeting to which all of you unanimously voted in favor of a cricket field at Muirwood Community Park. A cricket field should not be put there for a long list of reasons. First, Muirwood is not a sports park of which we have several in Pleasanton which with much more land than Muirwood. Second, there's only limited off street parking on only one single street and that's Muirwood. There is no parking lot. And Muirwood is a major connecting street from West Las Positas to Stone Ridge and everyone in the neighborhood uses it. Third, Muirwood is in a totally residential neighborhood. Most sports league activities are put at larger parks like Emerald Glen, Patelco, or Ken Mercer that have better access and much more parking. One of the members of your commission told me that people have been asking for places to play cricket. And at the same time, enrollment in Little League has declined drastically. In fact, he said five fold. So why not take two of the ball fields and convert them for cricket rather than try to fit a square peg in a round hole and force a cricket field into Muirwood Park. This park was never meant for a fixed sports field. And you were planning for a cricket field that is about the same size as a football field at 120 yards in diameter. This effectively takes up all the flat open space at Muirwood Park. For a small park, it already has a basketball court, dog park, group picnic area, playground, and it hosts many soccer games, Pop Warner football practice, and it's used by many people to play catch, frisbee, and a lot of fun just pickup games. These activities would be disrupted by having organized cricket games there, and it is really not fair to any of the local residents. Michelle from the city said it would only be used for youth league play, kids under 11 years old. Well, what keeps other groups from using it? Our residents are not going to police this park. I have spoken to many residents in Highland Oaks, which surrounds the park, and not a single person has expressed support for this idea. Finally, it seems to me that the selection of Muirwood Park directly benefits one of your board members and his three cricket organizations, and possibly one other board member as well. The optics are suspicious at the very least. The price was right and the conversion would be fast once it got approved. And just because you can do it fast and easy doesn't make it right. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Schoen. Thank you very much. Next, please. Next, we have Lisa Frederick. Lisa, you're on, there you go. There you go, now you can hear me. Yes. So um, thanks you guys. I was on, we were on the meeting. My husband's here also, Kurt Frederick. We were on the meeting last time and we just wanna reiterate, we have talked to many, many people since the last meeting that did not know um, this was going in. The same concerns are there, um, that this is an open area. We don't wanna have to put a, a part, um, take out the basketball, the um, baseball backstop and we want to leave that open area for people to come and play. We've been taking pictures and um, watching all the people play volleyball, like the other lady said, all of the Frisbee um, pickup games, soccer, different types of training. And so it's just not the right place. It's just too small, in our opinion. The balls will could go on the freeway. They can come and hit the cars. They can hit pedestrians walking by. So that's a very big concern for us. The major concern is traffic. We live on Mirwood Court and currently now, even when there's no soccer, we have full streets and they come down our street to park. So we feel that this will just add more parking um, problems to the area. And, you know, it's, it's very dangerous. We see kids there. In fact, yesterday I saw um, one of the kids sitting on the curb and a car came within inches of them. Uh, trying to pass another car. So it's just really difficult and scary and we don't want to add more congestion to the area. Um, and there's lots of other things that we have, but um, I know I'll heed my time to, to Kurt. But again, um, we have talked to more people about it. Um, and I know that there's some people showed up last week to the meetings, but 
I know there's several people are showing up this Saturday to the one that's at the park. And we're just trying to keep it to where it's um, more open space for all community activity. Yeah, I think, I think. Thank, thank I you, Lisa. That so far, but I also want to reiterate that, that, you know, we've been walking around the community and so far we haven't found any support for this. Everyone in the community loves the fact that this is a non-sports park. Um, we've been up and down almost every street that's adjacent to the park. And as I said, there's not anyone in the near area that supports this thing that we can find. Um, the other thing is I don't know how we would reconcile uh, usage of the park because people are setting up volleyball courts um, at sometimes, you know, six, seven in the morning and they're there for long periods of time. So what's going to happen if someone wants to play cricket when all these things are set up, who's going to negotiate Please. the usage of the space? Yeah. Because no one's going to care if there's a league, <laughs> if they're already set up with the volleyball, you know, or, or flag or whatever football or whatever, soccer, they play soccer there all the time too. And you are... Kurt Frederick. Thank, thank Kurt. Mm -hmm. uh, appreciate your Next. input. Next. Next up, we have Joanne Eddy, but I don't see Joanne in the room. Um, if Joanne is in the room under a different name, if you raise your hand, we can allow you to speak. Um, moving on, Tim Carrera. Tim, I um, where are you? Okay, mm -hmm. there you are. You're on mute. You, you, sir, you're on mute. There you go. <laughs> Sorry, I'm still having a tough time with the Zoom. Um, I'm here to, to, to mention, to talk about uh, cricket at Mir, but also, um, first of all, I just heard the announcement that you're going to take cricket off the agenda for March. Um, my assumption was it would have to go back to the commission for another review and vote because there are significant changes being made to the staff report. I've been told that by staff and commission. So I would assume it has to go back for a vote. Um, that's, that's just a comment I wanted to make. Um, also, what I wanted to give the staff and the commission a heads up about the event on Saturday, I saw a post on a Facebook group called uh, Pleasanton Cricket. It's a, a, a group of cricket players who are ad hoc pickup players, adults primarily. And the, um, the posting was from uh, Commissioner Amadi saying that uh, he's requesting those members uh, attend the uh, meeting on Saturday to provide their feedback on a field at Muirwood Park that's being uh, proposed. Um, I do have an issue with that. Again, the, the uh, event on Saturday was attended initially and primarily for the residents around the uh, neighborhood. But more importantly, at the 1118 meeting, we were told no adults would be playing there and, and specifically no ad hoc um, teams or groups. Um, this um, Pleasanton Cricket Group is, is defined as, they self-defined as a goalie pick, uh, goalie uh, group, which means a pickup group. They're looking for players and games to play at whatever fields are available. Um, this was precisely uh, the concern that was expressed by a resident on uh, November 18th. And we were told that no, no adults will be playing there, no ad hoc games, no pickup games. And we were also subsequ subsequently told that if somebody does show up, uh, we're to call the police and they can be uh, told to leave. Um, now, my concern is uh, Commissioner Amaldi reached out to this group who's, who's defined as an ad hoc uh, pickup uh, group for cricket. Nothing wrong with that. And they're all, and I work with colleagues, I mentioned this before, who were precisely these types of players. They were looking for a game after, after work. Um, and we were told and assured that this would not be the case. Well, here is Commissioner Amaldi reaching out to a group whose precisely their goals are, are related to that. Um, in his post, he didn't mention he was a commissioner. Uh, and he also didn't mention that uh, this Mirwood uh, cricket field would be designated youth cricket for youth under 11. So um, you may have some people showing up on Saturday. 
confused, uh, maybe looking for a place to play ad hoc cricket and pick up games. So be prepared. And also, if I would appreciate it if you would specify on the materials and be prepared to discuss this as being a youth only cricket field. Um, that was causing some confusion last Saturday at the farmer's market. Um, so that's um, my primary concerns and what I wanted to bring up. Thank you, uh, Tim. Thank you. Do we have any uh, other people in the room? Um, we have Leroy has their hand raised. Hi, yes, my name is Jessica Leroy. I'm a resident on Mirwood Drive. I am calling in to um, say that the residents in this area are against the cricket field and pickleball courts at our beautiful community park. It is a community park where our community gathers. The kids in the immediate area play sports. My kids have played soccer on this field. They run on this field. They play on this field. It does not need to be fenced in and owned by a special interest group, okay? This is a park where people come to meet. They picnic quite frequently. Um, <clears throat> in summer, you will see soccer games. You will see volleyball games. You will see Frisbee games. You will see an array of different summer um, sports, such as like the Skyhawks. They have a program with flag football and all these different things. You're going to push these kids in this immediate community out of that area for your special interest party of pickleball and cricket. And that is not right. There is gonna be low income housing going in over near Stone Ridge within the next couple of years. And there's gonna be a lot of families that need a park to go to. And Muirwood is that park. That is a park where our community gathers and they can join us and gather there too. And I don't know how you'd sleep at night, but I wouldn't sleep very well at night knowing that I'm taking that away from a community and families that go there to congregate and meet and have picnics and parties and celebrations. It's not right to block off and fence that beautiful field. If you go out there anytime, you'll see smiling faces and tons of kids. And it's not right to put something in the middle of that beautiful green field that doesn't belong there. And if you go on um, Pleasanton Rants and Raves, you'll hear some, that most of the community is against this. We have 410 signatures against this pickleball field and cricket field going in at Muirwood. 410 residents say no. And I think that's something that needs to be listened. And I'd also like to mention that we didn't get flyers on this till February 5th after 3 p.m. when the two meetings had already occurred. And that is wrong. We should have been notified prior to that meeting. And it, we will show up and we will voice our opinions and you will hear us and you will see our kids' faces on the 12th, because we are all against it in this community. The traffic, the safety, you're gonna have to build bathrooms. There, I, there's no way you're going to destroy our wildlife and our nature. And thank you very much, Mrs. Leroy. Do we have any other people that have their hands um, raised? S. Whitlock. Hi, I live in the Stone Ridge area. My house backs up to the park. So while I'm not Highland Oaks resident, I use this park, it's my local park. I'm concerned about safety. The park itself is narrow. If you put a cricket pitch in it, the potential for balls to go outside of it and do property damage or hit people is significant. Um, the traffic safety of additional cars, it's already, a nightmare. I go five miles an hour down Muirwood Drive because you have people opening doors without looking, getting out of cars without looking, children that dart out without looking. That's a problem. The fact that 
these games would take away from the park. During the week, the kids have homework and families work. On the weekends, they should be able to have family gatherings at the park and not push the children into having to play in the streets, which are already unsafe because of the excessive amount of traffic. And my final concern is the conflict of interest with one of the members on the board who has a vested interest in three different groups associated with cricket pushing an agenda. And I don't think a conflict of interest vote should be counted. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have anyone else? Harry Moorfield. Yes. Um, I thank you for letting me be heard. Um, I haven't really actually received a lot of information on this, um, but I, from what I gather on it, um, there's going to there's going to be a cricket pitch and pickleball field um, put in at the bottom of my street. Um, so this is the, the the park that is at the foot of my street. So I'm on Mirwood Court, and this is on Mirwood Drive at the Mirwood Park. Um, and I'll tell you right now, we have soccer, uh, football, baseball. Um, and most of those, when they play, there there's cars everywhere. Uh, cars parked legally, cars parked illegally, uh, people double park, people triple park. And there's already all of that problem. And you say, well, you know, just call the police. But the police aren't going to come. The police don't come. By the time they do come, if they come, uh, it's long since been over. And uh, it, it's, it's just unsafe. It's unsafe the way it is. To add to that another... Um, another sport that is a long-term cricket games last forever. Um, they're not, they're not in and out like a 45 minute soccer game. Uh, these are, you know, multi-hour games. Um, so there's already a lot going on in this small park. Um, the, the, the grounds crew will, will attest to the, the, the amount of activity that's already going on there and that they have to recover from, um, it, more, it, more is not needed. Um, like I said, there's very little information out there. I think it's incumbent on the board to put out a lot more information on this. Um, and, and like I said, you already have soccer, football, tennis, ba barbecues, dog park, uh, playground. Uh, you don't need another thing. I'm sure there's somewhere else in Pleasanton that has fallow field that needs to be developed, uh, perhaps over by the, uh, the water treatment area where they have the skate park and the new soccer field. Uh, there's, uh, you know, places out, out, uh, towards, uh, uh, the, the reservoir area where the old, uh, water slide was, um, you know, there's a lot of places that can be developed. It doesn't have, you don't have to take over, um, the one park that I can walk to. Okay. Well, uh, that's you, it. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Moorfield. Okay. Uh, do we have anyone else? No other speakers on this item. Okay. If not, we are closed uh, with the um, open public meeting. Uh, next on board is uh, matters for the commission's review, action, and information. Uh, review and recommend approval of the draft waste side and Deluki Park conceptual design. So Heidi, do you wanna introduce? Uh, Matt, are you going first? Who's going? It's just Matt. This is the Matt show tonight with our consultant, Richard Larson. So I'll let Matt do the intro. Okay. Thank you, Heidi. Well, this is a project a long time in coming. I think we started talking about Wayside and Deluki Parks back in 2002. And tonight with us, we have the great fortune of having the landscape architect that worked on the project back in 2002. So uh, if you could believe it, it's been 20 years that we've been. I can on believe Wayside. it. <laughs> Yeah, well, yeah, jo Joni, you could believe it because you, you've you felt it. Uh -huh. But um, tonight we have a presentation for you. Um, we're going to ask you to look at uh, the, the concept plans. Richard has a presentation. He's going to go through the whole presentation. And it, it's basically going to mirror the uh, agenda report, but maybe not go into the background in as great a detail. But we can definitely an ask, uh, answer any questions that you ask. And um, Richard, I'll, I'll let you take it away. Okay. Thanks very much, Matt. Thank you, Commission. It's really a pleasure to be able to come here and talk with you tonight. I really appreciate the opportunity to 
share with you our most recent thoughts about these two wonderful parks uh, and the really great amount of potential these, these two parks have in their kind of exalted position in, uh, in near downtown Pleasant, uh, during the downtown in Pleasanton. Um, as Matt says, this has been a long time coming. Um, I actually come to this party um, earlier than 2002, having prepared the downtown parks and trails master plan and uh, um, first walked the site with Dolores Benson, Dolores Benson and Mike Fulford somewhere around 1994, 1995, um, when we were talking about meeting together eight sites um, in the downtown area. Well, during that time, I'm going to do the share screen as I um, continue. During that time, um, the, let's see, pause for a moment, I'm sorry, while I get this it's set up. up. Okay, we're up. All right. Um, it's, <laughs> during that time, what I was going to say is that the, um, there are a few members of staff that have changed, and I know the Parks and Recreation Commission has changed, and the City Council has changed. But it's really to the to the credit of the City of Pleasanton that um, the the design that we're talking about now is really based on so much of the work that has been done during the past, and that includes very robust uh, a very robust um, public engagement um, portion of the. Um, downtown parks and trails master plan and of the um, previous uh, recommendations and versions of the master plan that have, that have come up. Right now we're talking with you about um, potential changes to the 2014 master plan, which is currently the master plan for Lions Way site in Duluki Parks. And what we are requesting is that the commission review and make a recommendation to approve the draft conceptual design. Um, this does not let us off the hook on my side of the table though, because we still have a lot of work to do. We've done a lot of study and we'll, we'll show you some of that. And I'm happy to take questions and talk with you about some of the changes that have taken place, not only since 2014, but since you as a commission have last seen this. And a couple of those are quite obvious. and we'll be sure to talk about, about those very important changes that have taken place. Well, as I say, in 2014, um, the master plan was approved. Um, the basic elements of the 2014 plan that were so important to its adoption are very much part of the current thinking. We still want to try to make these two parks uh, um, almost as one park in their coordinated design. Um, the Chan Henderson Bandstand, as beloved as it is, um, I think it was built, if I remember, 1965, so it's been around a while and it, it could really use at least an upgrade, we're assuming it would be replaced. Um, there's a hope for some improvement in parking. Um, there's a need to accommodate the regional trail that runs through the railroad corridor. Um, there has always been a... Um, a hope for a children's adventure play area um, and support for the farmer's market from West Angela Street in Duluki Park. Um, of course, there's, there are bus stops here and they need to be accommodated and we want shade trees and there are a number of other, number of other things that um, have not changed uh, in terms of the, um, the goals and the intended uses for the park. When we last came to the commission, we brought four schemes, um, site design alternatives that mm, were reviewed by the commission. The commission had a very clear preference for what we called alternate B. And so since that time, um, a lot has taken place, but one of the things that's happened is we did some alternative design studies um, back in 2019 after we last saw you as a commission. I'll run through these very quickly. We can come back to them if you'd like. Um, these are what we're calling B1, B2, and B3. You'll notice that I'm going to back up for a moment just so you see them. 
that each of these um, incorporate the creek in Lyons Wayside Park differently. They're on different sides of the um, then existing eucalyptus tree. Well, as we all know, the eucalyptus tree, um, the grand monument tree of the city was uh, removed as a hazard. Um, it makes me uh, sleep better at night knowing that that, that thing is out of, out of a, a major public area. Um, and property was added to the north side of the park. So if you look at this exhibit, um, on the far right of the drawing, there's a sort of a greenish area, dashed lines. That's the property that was added to the park. There were two commercial buildings and a parking lot there before the uh, property was added. Those have been removed um, and two significant trees have been saved. Um, the course of the creek now has more options because the eucalyptus has gone. That's a significant um, difference both for the overall design of the park, but also for the one of the most important elements of the park, that being the bandstand and its audience area. So when those things changed, we embarked on a quick re-look at the site from a site analysis standpoint, um, given that there were some changes in the site. On the bottom of this exhibit, you can see some of the photographs that um, can remind us, although I'm guessing everybody here tonight is quite familiar with these two parks um, of some of the major elements. There are open lawns for informal play. Um, the Firehouse Arts Center is in, essentially in, but you might say adjacent to the park. Um, and, oh, and one of the other things I wanted to mention is that um, one thing that was in the 2002 plan and the 2014 master plan for this park um, is uh, restrooms in the park. And after the 2002 version, um, of course, restrooms were installed in Duluki Park. Um, so we took extra care to look at the creek um, that runs through both Lions Wayside and Duluki. Sometimes it's hard to remember that there is actually a creek, it's Cottinger Creek in Lions Wayside Park because it is what the hydrologists and the stream side is called ephemeral, and that means that it's usually not there. Um, so we took extra care to look at that. Um, this slide shows um, some of the, what we kind of awkwardly call precedent images, and that really just means that we're looking to define how we want the place to feel. What's the, what's the general idea of the creek in these parks? Well, it should be informal naturalistic planting, planting that belongs in and near a creek and creek crossings uh, have different character that we might um, um, borrow from if, if we're fortunate enough to be able to do that. Mm. In the course of our study, we found that the, um, and I'll back up just a minute here because um, one of the significant elements that you probably are familiar with having read the report is that our previous plans were uh, that, that showed no creek in Lyons Wayside Park. This is a major element. I'm sorry, I skipped over it. Um, that in the 2014 plan, for example, showed no creek in the Lyons Wayside Park. Um, this was not acceptable to the regulatory agencies. And whether we like it or not, and oftentimes we don't, um, the regulatory agencies hold sway. We have to listen to them or we don't get to uh, do park improvements. Um, the, uh, so one of the things we studied was, uh, one of the things we needed um, at the request of the Regional Water Quality Control Board, um, which I will call the Water Board, uh, was further hydrological study than uh, the preliminary study that our firm did. Um, the water board requested um, a greater intensity of study and they were concerned about a number of things, but mainly they wanted to make sure that during peak flows, um, heavy rain events, which we can only hope we're lucky enough to experience in the future, um, that during peak rain events, the whatever is done with the creek will still be able to handle, it will have the capacity to handle those flows. Um, and that's why we, anyway, that's one of the things that Balance Hydrologics, the um, consulting firm that we are now working with, 
uh, has has made sure they are accommodating and they have incorporated into their um, alignment for the what we call the low flow portion of the creek that's the um, meandering uh, creek path within the meanders overall meanders that's the real um, what you might call the creek bed those meanders and the reinforcing and all the technical elements that are necessary to um, restore a naturalistic creek that those can be um, sustainable and uh, reliable. Um, and they also answer um, goals having to do with habitat restoration, um, uh, aquifer re restoration and, uh, and such. So we have looked at the character of the creek and some of the basic goals we have for the creek, both within Lions Wayside Park, and that's what's shown here. Um, and uh, somewhat slightly different in character um, in Deluki Park as well. Um, we've also done a few design studies. These are all preliminary. These are um, not really proposals yet. They are preliminary and we're exploring um, what, um, what options there are and what, what uh, kind of comments we get both from you and as a commission and from the city council after we've talked with you. We want to make sure there's an integrated bandstand that is a bandstand integrated into the park. And I'll be sure to talk about why we are showing the bandstand in such a different location after all those preliminary conversations than we have previously. Um, the creek enhancements we're very concerned about and, and very uh, conscious of. Um, we want to make sure there's a strong connection, especially for performing arts to the Firehouse Arts Center. Um, there uh, is planned overflow space for Saturday market market activities and the sort of left-hand side of the sheet um, that is the generally southern uh, portion of Deluki Park. And um, um, something that has also been around since the uh, 2002 days, um, natural, uh, well, nature play, nature discovery play within the park. And that's largely to um, provide a safer alternative and a, um, a more um, visible uh, location or locations for uh, children to play. Um, that's as opposed to uh, the ditch as it's commonly known in Lions Wayside Park, um, which is a great place for kids to play and has been for years and years uh, during say Friday, or, I mean, Saturday night concerts and such. Let's talk about that bandstand siding. Um, I'm happy to take comments and questions afterwards, but on the left, you'll see the location, um, a possible location for the bandstand um, adjacent Railroad Avenue. Um, we talked about that in previous times, mainly you might say, because we were pretty sure, in fact, I was quite convinced that the regulatory agencies would not allow the bandstand to be close to the creek. Mm. There are a couple of advantages to putting it there, um, but on balance, our current thinking is that it's um, more beneficial to the park in general to have the band stand close to the creek. And what has been such a pleasant surprise to us is that not only did we get very positive um, comments from the water board, um, but we also received co positive comments from the California Fish and Wildlife um, agency and the uh, Army Corps of Engineers at our in, when we tested these concepts um, at their interagency meeting. But what is especially um, interesting and happy news is that they were uh, very positive about placing the bandstand close to the creek. It, it seems unusual given their usual stance, but I think it's partly because of the other uh, changes in creek uh, restoration um, um, proposal uh, or proposed ideas um, that were, we, we talked with them about um, that led them to be quite happy um, without question um, with the siting of the bandstand close to, closer to the creek. Um, allow me for a moment to kind of sell the idea of putting the bandstand close to the creek since it's probably new. Um, we had 
essentially said it wasn't going to be possible before. Um, all the grading in a, an area such as the creek, I'm sorry, such as the park, um, will naturally need to flow towards the creek. That's just what natural grades will want to do at a creek. Um, and, and, and that's just the kind of grading that we would most like to see in a bandstand audience area relationship. It's if the grading, if the, if the ground is going to slope generally from Railroad Avenue towards the creek um, and the bandstand is placed close to Railroad Avenue, any sense of an amphitheater where you're looking across or slightly down to a band um, whether they're performing music or theatrical events or movies in the park um, is, is at least a little uncomfortable. It's hard to crane your neck for very long looking up at a, at a stage. Um, placing the bandstand close to the creek means we can incorporate at least a little bit of um, amphitheater type grading to the ground plane. It can slope towards the bandstand and that has the added advantage of letting the evening afternoon and evening sun shine in the eyes of the performers, just as stage lights would do. Um, that's as opposed, of course, to looking into the sun when you look at the bandstand, if it's a close to Railroad Avenue. The other thing that this location does is it opens up the, really the entire park as an audience area in a way that is not quite the case when the bandstand is next to the Railroad Avenue. And it allows us to think of Railroad Avenue itself as part of the audience area and the plazas at the art center as being part of the audience area. That means a lot of overflow um, area for audience. And it also means um, that those places in hardscape are much more accessible. It's hard for, it's hard to make an accessible route across lawn that truly is accessible. Um, we can talk further about that, as I say. Let's see if we can just move sort of quickly along to look at some of the specifics of uh, the park. Um, everything we're looking at today is a study. It's not really a final design. Um, we're not there yet, but we are happy to have looked at some of these things um, in a little more detail than we might have earlier. Mm. On the far right, you're seeing a um, a parking lot to replace what is now vacant land, what we're thinking of as the north parcel of the park. Um, the current thinking, having talked with city engineer and city traffic engineer, is that there would be an auto connection from First Street into the um, parking in the railroad corridor. Um, so that would be a two-way connection and there would be parking in between that would supplement the parking on in the railroad corridor and along First Street. Um, parking on First Street, we're assuming would stay as parallel parking. We're showing uh, bulb outs at the corners to um, increase pedestrian safety, safety for street cro crossings and um, to um, sort of favor a plaza instead of a street. Um, we're showing creek crossings. Um, at key points in the park. And um, we have, oh, I'll get back to that in a minute. Um, we are retaining the idea of um, a feeling of entry gateway um, between the two parks along Neal Street as being an entry into downtown. We're talking about a relatively protected um, uh, pedestrian crossing mid block right up at Railroad Avenue for pedestrians and those in the, in the uh, regional trail. Um, let's see, we're looking at uh, another multi-use lawn area in uh, Deluki Park and uh, some accommodation for overflow uh, pavilions and such in the uh, farmers Saturday farmer's market adjacent to West Angeles Street. One of the most important elements of this park is to provide audience area for the bandstand and for any events that might happen there. Um, in this case, we are able to 
Um, it looks like easily exceed the number of square feet of audience area we had thought we would be able to get in the 2014 plan. And it also appears we're showing more audience area if you include Railroad Avenue than any other plan we've, we've looked at, including existing conditions. So um, that is, it's kind of, that's kind of wonderful news. <laughs> One way we get to have uh, called Railroad Avenue um, uh, audience area is that during special events, bollards can be installed in the street, both at Neal Street and then farther up at Division Street. Um, this has been talked about for a long time. We've talked with the city engineer and the city traffic engineer about that. And that seems to be a reasonable possibility. Um, everybody seems to be in favor of it. We also have the possibility of putting bollards across Neal Street, both at near the Meadowlark Dairy, uh, just past Railroad Avenue and at the intersection with First Street. This is not quite so um, uncontroversial an idea. It may be that that won't fly. The idea is that um, this portion of the street would also become part of a um, park joining area and pedestrian area during special events when um, both parks would be hosting a special event. Um, preliminary discussions with the bus uh, line have indicated that this rerouting buses through here from those bus stops um, is possible. Nobody's giving us a firm go ahead on that. So this is an idea. We'll put it under that characteristic or that categorization. We're making sure we're paying attention to the regional trail, which runs through the, through the downtown area. If you look in the lower right of the diagram here, um, there's a reduced map showing um, from about the Arroyo del Val, um, the regional trail coming through the railroad corridor and through the improved portion of that corridor in the parking area um, north of the parks. And then going through the parks and uh, continuing on in the corridor until it gets to Bernal Avenue. This is consistent with the Bikes and Trails uh, master plan for the city. And it is also something that kind of goes along with what we've thought for a long time about one of the functions of these two parks. Um, there will be an option if this, if we're lucky enough to have the bridge cross the creek here um, at the north end of the park, there would be an option for people coming down the regional trail to avoid going through the main part of the park and just come up to the sidewalk and continue uh, on through. Um, but we feel that having people come through and walk their bikes, I'm sure there would be signs indicating such, um, and walk through the park on this trail um, would be an activating feature for the park. It's one of those things that um, we like to see lots of people in parks. It just makes them more interesting and inviting and safer. Um, and then that trail would, would parallel the um, sort of canal-like riprap um, area of the uh, creek uh, in Duluki Park um, adjacent to the parking here before it crosses the street again into the railroad corridor. Uh, nature discovery play could, which you'll see um, exemplified at the bottom of the screen with some um, character photographs. Um, this kind of play could take place in any one of the three locations we've shown here. Um, one in Lions Wayside Park and one or two in Duluki Park. Um, there are lots of precedents for this, lots of uh, examples of this uh, kind of play area. And we feel it's a, a wonderful way to um, not replicate, but replace the um, experience of playing in uh, the, the dry creek in Lions Wayside, for example, now. I've raced through this. I apologize for talking so much, um, but I'm happy to talk further. Um, I look forward to questions, comments, et cetera. And uh, um, anyway, thanks again for letting us come and talk. Thank you. Um, okay. Um, since I see Chuck, you're uh, up. Do you have some questions you would like to ask? Um. Nothing specific other than the fact that initially I talked to Matt earlier today and trying to get a concept of 
the the um, bandstand moving of course what's always been considered the traditional um facing towards first street and flipping it towards potentially the other side of the creek and facing towards the firehouse and um i would imagine that one thing i think we have to do and of course it's not really a question it's just a matter of um, i think we need to get some community involvement to maybe understand um, the plan and also get, get some buy-in as far as making sure that uh, there's an understanding and, and instead of having this being a plan that we we approach later on thanks chuck mike do you have anything that you'd like to ask um yeah a couple things uh, mr larson really appreciate your presentation very thorough and um, a couple things real quick just um on the crossing at Neal and um, West Angela, it shows tabled walk. Can you define what that actually means? Sure. I apologize for jargon, and I hope I haven't used much of it in my That's okay. descriptions too. <laughs> um, but a tabled walk is meant to uh, describe a raised portion of the street. Um, it's a traffic calming element, and there could also be striping and such to further the idea of traffic calming. And it provides a uh, sort of level in, level out um, way of crossing the street for pedestrians as well. Very good. A, a couple other real quick questions. It looks like on um, the, uh, the the Lucci side um, that what's existing there now is a large lawn area. It looks like on the on the left side, closest to Angela, is it? Are those all those circles? Are those defined as trees? Then those are trees to be planted in that area. Yeah, that's the preliminary concept to, to be reviewed. Um, it's to add shade to the area where the um, sort of portable pavilions would be, um, might be put up for the Saturday market. And also just to provide shade. It's one of those things that we want to make sure we're paying attention to in both these parks. Great. Now, finally, um, so am I under the impression that the creek issue with our regulatory um, you know, uh, whatever agencies that is that close to being settled or is it settled? I would say it's quite settled. Um, what we did was we went to the water board um, first and they were very, I want to say surprisingly positive about preliminary plans that we had back then. Um, and I don't think I'm speaking out of turn when I say that that's not the usual answer that the water board gives to pretty much any kind of development. Um, they're very careful about protecting creeks and making sure they are restored. Um, so we were very pleased with that. We um, went back and had another positive um, response, but this, I think it was the second time, Matt may be able to perfect, uh, perfect my chronology, but um, at the second time they said, uh, fine, but we're gonna need more um, hydrology study to be sure that um, that this is uh, reasonable from our standpoint. And so one of the reasons we um, chose to work with Balance Hydrologics is that they have a lot of local experience. They do not only the sort of scientific and engineering part of creek restoration, but they also um, are interested in habitat renewal and uh, you know sort of related, um, the stuff that relates to streams and creeks as as we might want to see happen. Um, no, that sounds great. That's all I have. Thank you. Uh, Richard, one thing I would add to what you're saying is um, when we went to that interagency meeting that Richard mentioned earlier, they really like to see that meander. And, and if you look at the existing location of Cottinger Creek compared to where we're proposing it, it we've significantly shifted to the east. And that's why we're getting that greater lawn area that you could you could see in the concept now. Yeah, yeah, really good point, Matt. Right now, the creek, as as you all may know, enters the park at First Street, angles up till it gets to the railroad corridor, and then just shoots straight on over to the culvert under Neal Street. Uh, okay, Ramesh, do you have any questions? No, 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 thanks. You're good. Okay, Mary? 
Yes. Hi. Thank you so much. It's so exciting to see this uh, plan and kind of all this to come to fruition. I have a question about the parking lot. How many spaces total is that adding um, considering it looks like there's also some spaces taken away to actually get into the parking lot from the existing one? Yep. Yep. And, you know, we're potentially talking about removing some spaces in Neal Street. Um, both to accommodate the bulb outs uh, at the corners and also just to kind of clean up that area. Um, and, and some, there would be some, maybe may some be some impact to losing spaces on first street. Um, so yes, you're right. There would be parallel spaces that could happen here if this along first street, if the parking lot were not there in its entry. And there would be spaces, as you can tell, um, I'm sorry, I'm using my cursor where you can't see it. Anyway, <laughs> the spaces that currently exist okay. in, in the uh, railroad mm -hmm. corridor, there are some that would be lost. Um, I, you know, because this is so preliminary, what we did was draw something up that looks very realistic. I, I think what we can say, but, but that's so much too early to count spaces. What we can say is that um, I, I have every confidence we're going to either end up with a net law a net no loss of parking spaces when all is done, um, even if some of these more significant changes happen or um, more likely an increase in parking spaces. I can't quite say how many yet, just because for example, uh, to look at this area, we've shown a whole bunch of spaces in there. Well, when it gets right down to it, grading next to the Creek, we may not be able to do as much as we want. We wanna make sure that we're paying attention to um, uh, storm drainage uh, capture areas for bioinfiltration. Um, we think we've incorporated that here, but we'll, of course, need to know more later. Um, I'm sorry to be evasive, but I have every confidence we're going to get um, an increase in, in spaces or, at worst, no net loss. That, that's okay. I was just wondering, I mean, because I look at that space and I just wonder if there's also a consideration to actually make it part of the park instead of the parking, because I feel like, and I, you know, I've spent a ton of time at the firehouse, not during that, but just like my kids do tons of theater there. So I know that to me, that parking lot is never filled and it's only like a few occasions that actually parking is a problem in that spot. And I know even like you know, it's used for all of it. And I always find parking there. Like that's my go-to and I never am disappointed. So I'm just wondering if that, if it would be considered that that space could be used for something other than parking um, because you mentioned all these great elements that we want. And this is kind of like the focal point of the downtown area. And so I would, I would just say, I'd like to see a plan without any new parking spaces. <laughs> I don't know so if that's radical. controversial or not, but so radical, you know, form follows parking. We, uh, True. we, we have uh, always known that there's been um, a, a strong contingent of, and often from the downtown merchants um, for more parking, because um, as with some other kinds of design, parking is often designed for the maximum use times. Um, yeah. But I take your point. We have noted that. And uh, um, yeah, I think that's that's much to be considered. One other small thing, or just to, a question, or I don't, can we do comments or suggestions yet, Joni, or is that later? Uh, I would have to ask Heidi what, uh, or I think all of us go through first with our questions, and then we come back. Heidi, am I correct? You can do it, yeah, you can certainly do it that way. So you would ask questions first, go to public comment, and then come back for commissioner comments and uh, any type of motion. Because we do have uh, a um, speaker um, to, to come. Okay, um, okay. So. Um, I'm done, thanks. You sure? Okay, <laughs> yeah, she shakes her head. Um, so. Uh, can I go ahead and ask questions and then go to our person outside? Okay. Um, since I was uh, very aware of our last go around where we talked very, very, very long time about the bandstand 
being closer to the firehouse for uh, several reasons. One being if equipment for bands uh, or speakers or any uh, AV equipment would need it to be unloaded, that it would be much more beneficial to have it on the Railroad Avenue side. Uh, in looking at this, is there a way that car, uh, cars or trucks can get in there to unload their equipment or staging if there's plays or whatever that are gonna be going on? Yes, there is. Um, we've shown, and it was on the circulation plan that we labeled this a vehicular path. I'm sorry, I'm using the cursor the wrong way. I, I'm looking so at a, the one that we, the uh, attachment one. Oh, okay. There's a, on the, on the screen that I'm looking at now, there's a driveway at Railroad Avenue for the little plaza. And this path that comes in, um, we have assumed and labeled as a potential vehicular um, pa uh, path. So that would not only allow maintenance vehicles to access um, the creek and the bandstand, but it's a, a great opportunity for load in and load out for theater type uses, um, for equipment, for music, um, et cetera. We, we've also assumed that there would be vaults in or near the, um, the bandstand that would have uh, conduit and wiring for lighting and sound equipment as well. And that's something that can be phased in. Um, you know, the, the vaults and the conduit can be placed at one point and then future um, improvements later. Well, okay. Uh, on uh, the- one, I'm sorry, I should say one more thing. And that is, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Um, the, one of the things we, we really value about the, the siting of the bandstand anywhere in the park here is its proximity to the Firehouse Arts Center. Um, there's just nothing better than having these two um, major um, activity centers in the way of music, theater, and the other performing arts um, close to each other. They are only going to be, um, anyway, oh, it's going to be bene beneficial um, to all. Uh, okay, because I'm, I'm looking at... Um... You're, you're talking about electrical and, and all of that going to the bandstand. Mm -hmm. Isn't uh, the pricing on that going to be um, exponentially more than if it were over on the Railroad Avenue side, closer to the firehouse? There probably is some um, increase in price, yes. Um, yes, and we're always looking at uh, prices. Mm -hmm. So... Um, the other thing, uh, looking at Deluki Park, um, um, and, I, and it's very obvious that the creek bed or the ditch, whatever you want to call it, um, is now a, a meandering type of creek. Um, when, you, when we're looking at the um, up against um, the building that has the... Um, mortgage company it's it's the old right uh, railroad station yes. well, you you have a whole line of trees there is trees or are those shrubs because those that's a heck of a lot of trees yep they are trees um i am um i'll tell you frankly i'm a little concerned about that i think it's kind of a fanciful um row of trees because i'm not sure we have the room in there there's a this is a very uh, restricted width in that area. And what we're hoping is to put in a um, section of the regional trail, very much like the kind of um, widths of, of paths that we have in the northern part of the um, parking area in the railroad corridor. And so how much room there is left for parking and trees, we are going to have to, dis we're going to have to discern that um, later, we need a little more survey information. It's apparent that there will be a grading issue because there, the, that yep. paved area is higher than the top of the wall at the creek. So, so I'm thinking that row of trees is uh, non gratis. May or may not happen. Yeah, we'll just see. Okay. And so, uh, if we're going with that, then th does that mean that you're getting rid of? that all that parking on that 
a specific area in that was not not clear yet we we know we would at least be able to put in um parallel parking and that offers a number and that's one reason we have the um we're sort of showing a a uh, um, a new parking area at the we're not sort of we're showing the new area at the uh, north so you would be you would be minus about uh 20 parking spots could be there mm -hmm. that, at least 20 yeah okay one of, the, one of the things that we well we're getting into the weeds here those parking spots are are not um they don't accommodate ada parking and there will be a need for that um, with any improvements in the park um, and so, so we need to take to that into that. consideration also with the firehouse parking. Now, would we have to increase the ADA uh, parking in the um, in the new parking section? I think both the new parking section and the portion adjacent with Deluki Park would have to have some um, ADA compatible spaces. Yes. Okay, and um, the. Other thing that um, I was wondering about was um, the secondary audience uh, area. Um, so that would mean any time, like on uh, Friday nights in the park, you would uh, that would be closed off. It it remains a possibility to close it off, and so it might be that during large events that would happen. I know that even now. Um, there are a lot of people who like to gather in Deluki Park um, instead of in Lions Wayside right. when there's a concert. So well, there would be yeah. accommodation of that as well. Okay, because, and I was looking at that area in Deluki, mm -hmm. and you have uh, um, shrunk it, uh, the grass area. Um, it's beautiful, but you shrunk it. And uh, now, what, what prior to the pandemic, the uh, first, the Friday night um, summer uh, you know, concerts were taking up about half of Deluki Park. So um, I totally take your point, but I will mention that um, the area of the plaza is also audience area and the area that is shown as um, uh, accommodating the farmer's market area is also audience area. It simply has trees there. Um, and that's certainly. So what, what is going to be underneath those trees that are closest to Angela Street? Is unclear, that the... unclear at the moment, but it could be DG. Um, okay. Or if there's a need for something more, why there could be paving or um, below, below lawn uh, type uh, cells that would accommodate some vehicular traffic, even though it looks like lawn. Okay. It would be it would be a combination of the turf that's the green that you see and some sort of paving like Richard mentioned. Right. Okay. I should have said that. Thank you, Matt. It's it's a combination there. It's and so and the the pathway for the car the automobiles to get to the uh, creek and to uh, the bandstand is what would the uh, composite um, be? What would be the surface? Um, again, I'm unclear, but uh, there's no reason it couldn't be a, uh, a paving, an actual paving um, to accommodate those vehicles. Okay. Is there, uh, is there a, an alternative that we can look at possibly that uh, follows the trail? Yeah, I see uh, at, when it's outlined. Oh, you mean uh, to use the the regional trail um, uh -huh. for that purpose? Yes, that is possible. Mm -hmm. Because for me, if you're, you're showing the, the bandstand where it is, and then you're showing these two asphalt uh, roads or pathways uh, that are cutting in between all the grass, it's not very appealing. So what, or just to, just to, um, defend options for a moment because um, I think your your point is really well taken. Um, this could be a, um, a a lovely kind of concrete paving um, with patterning. It could be something that looks more like stone, or it could even be stone, um, a, as long as it has a vehicular character. And we do want to be able to allow people to cross the lawn in one fashion or another in an accessible fashion to. Um, at least that's one of the goals so far. 
So we're trying to look at accessibility throughout as well. Okay. Thank you. Um, we do have one uh, person that um, has, um, I hope, uh, Todd Nelson. Yep, I'll let him in. Okay, thank you. Richard, would you mind um, unsharing your screen so we can get that timer a little more prominent? Oh, sorry about that, I sure will. Thank you so much. Yeah. Hi, uh, hopefully I'm off mute. Yes, you are. Looks like it, good, thank you. So I'm Todd Nelson. Um, I happen to be a member of the Bicycle, Pedestrian and Trails Committee, uh, but I'm speaking from my own opinions. Yes, Joni, hi, saw you a couple of weeks ago. Yes. Um, so as you all know, the regional trail transportation corridor has been a topic on multiple plans for decades in the city. Um, the vision that Pleasanton Vision basically incorporates it. When they purchased the railway corridor from the county, it was envisioned as a regional trail, basically the entire length of downtown. Um, all the various plans call it out and kind of depend on it. Even um, when we did the downtown specific plan, I think that was the one where we were arguing for a bike lane on First Street and that was controversial because of parking, because of the residences right there, and because of the, the high flow of traffic through there. So the compromise was that we would route bicycles down the regional trail. And so that trail really is important to a lot of the different concepts that the city's got. Even Alameda County um, expects this portion to be contributed by the city so that ultimately from Niles, all the way to Shadow Cliffs, we've got a continuous trail. Same is true for East Bay Regional Parks. Um, so, so my questions um, are a lot like Mary's, so thank you for, for a lot of those topics. Um, if, I, if I start over on Spring Street and look at the firehouse trail that exists, um, as a cyclist, it's almost unusable. As you enter the trail from Spring Street, you have to go into the parking lot because there's no curb cut. And then you have to make a hard right angle turn, which on a bicycle means you have to get off and walk. Um, at that point, it's a sidewalk. It's not really a bicycle trail anymore. The, the surface itself is concrete, which is not the recommended surface treatment that we call out in the Bike Pedestrian Master Plan. Um, we call out asphalt for a variety of reasons. If you've ever heard a skateboarder go down the trail, ka-chunk, 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 it feels that way on a bike. Um, but my biggest concern, the way you've drawn the regional trail between Neal and West Angela is right on top of the parking. And so I echo all the same thoughts that Mary had, that council and everyone else is gonna reject that. And so I'd like to see an alternative that preserves that knowing that you'll get a lot of pushback for the loss of parking there, because that's a lot closer to the downtown merchants. So those are my key points, thank you. Hey, thanks, Todd. Okay. Uh, we have Andre Pegron, Pegron with a hand up. Okay, Andre, welcome. <laughs> Hi, Commission. Um, thank you very much. Uh, I really like the plan that you are putting together here. It's good to see, you know, you're preserving the natural element of the creek. Um, I think you've made a convincing case for putting the bandstand in a way that gives it that natural amphitheater look and feel. Um, specifically, I want to uh, commend you for the uh, traffic calming and pedestrian improvements. I think the park would be greatly diminished if Neal Street was just another big highway, you know. Santa Rita is for cars, 580 is for cars. This is an area that's for people. Um, I really liked Mary's suggestion that, you know, we don't need more parking lot. We really do need more parks. We need more places for people to socialize and smile and be together. You know, they can, we can always park, you know, around the corner, a block away, as Mary said, right there. I've never had trouble. Um, and so I, I really like seeing the, those pedestrian bulb outs that make cars go more slowly, more carefully. I like seeing the bollards so that, um, you know, maybe someday I could take my daughter there and let her walk around and not have to worry about the cars going up and down Neil, you know, that it could be a really like safe all ages uh, experience that way. 
Um, I also want to uh, double what Todd just shared and say that I think that uh, a clear, separated, bike-friendly path through this park would be is absolutely crucial and it would be an, a, a fumbled opportunity to let this slip by. I ride my bike all over Pleasanton. I'm always looking for great places to ride it. And downtown is kind of an area that I avoid because Main Street is so full of, uh, you know, uh, it's, 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 it doesn't feel safe for me on, on my bicycle. If there were a path going right through this beautiful park. I would ride it all the time. My family would ride it all the time. And uh, it needs to connect through. And I know when I'm on a bicycle, I don't want to be competing or next to cars. I don't want to be competing or next to, you know, people with having a picnic or, or doing their things. I think the carving out a little bit of space, you know, that 10 foot wide lane or whatever it is for bikes to be able to go through this park in a way that's safe, in a way that's separated, in a way that doesn't interfere with the cars, doesn't interfere with the people will, uh, will really, you know, help the park be kind of something for everybody. It'll have the people, it'll have the theater, it'll have uh, and and also the bikes coming through, you know, so uh, Todd spoke kind of to the vision of how this can be part of not just this park, but a greater part of Pleasanton overall. So I hope we keep that in mind uh, when we're talking about it. And um, what was the other thing I wanted to say? Uh, you know, that's it. Let's keep I really appreciate all the work you're doing to make sure that this is a great park for people. Oh, uh, we talk about parking and traffic and everything, maintaining the way for bikes to get in and out. Every person who's on their bike is someone who's not in their car going through their park. So if we want to talk about how to help with the parking, help with the traffic, making sure there's good bike access is a way to do it. Okay, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, um, well, Tony, can I, uh, I was going to ask a kind of a segue question to what the speakers have spoken, and maybe Matt or Richard. As far as putting the bandstand on the other side and opening up wayside for greenery and of course maybe connecting to the uh, currently being built transportation corridor, that provides us the opportunity, doesn't it, to have that continuous trail making use of the wayside park area that's gonna be left. Um, and I don't know where we are with, um, with coming up with the way to have that transportation corridor complement what's gonna go through wayside. Um, I'm not sure what the question is. Well, we're, currently we're having the transportation corridor that's that's being built um, that's all the way up to, correct me if I'm wrong, right up to Neil, Matt? Well, what we're, what we're looking at on this is a proposal that the transportation corridor uh, regional trail, which runs adjacent to the parking lot right now, would continue its path through the park um, and back of the bandstand adjacent to the creek and then cross at the table crossing and then would go um, next to the parking lot um, at Deluki. Um, I, think, I think this is a, an interesting question and probably deserves some, some study um, because there are so many competing, competing uses in this park and around it. Um, I'll just say my assumption, I stick my neck out here, so apologize, but my assumption has been that in order to accommodate the regional, regional trail and its uses and the activity activities and uses through um, or around an activated, you might say, Deluki Park and Lions Wayside Park, that bicycles would have to go slower than they might otherwise on the street. And they might even have to be walked through some portions of the park during some events. Um, I don't see this as being a place for 15 mile an hour um, bicycle riding um, through here. It's a tough spot because First Street has traffic issues and its width make it tough to put a bike lane in the street, a protected bike lane. Um, as one of the speakers mentioned, so many driveways along, the, along First Street make that a hazardous um, location for bikes. Um, if, if the bike, if the pedestrian sidewalk adjacent to First Street is made into a, a bicycle trail that also involves conflicts. So um, it's, a, it's a tough one. We also thought about bringing the bicycle or the regional trail, because it's not just for bikes, um, down the driveway adjacent to the Firehouse Arts Center and then down Railroad Avenue. That's circuitous and it's hard to know how many people would actually want to do that when there's this wonderful park to 
enter, even if you do have to slow down or walk your bike or something. Anyway, I, I don't usually stick my neck out in favor of something like this, but just to kind of give you an idea of the kind of compromise that might might be necessary down the, down the road. Okay, do we have anybody else that would like to speak to? Um, Todd Nelson raised his hand again, but uh, he already spoke. I don't know if we let him back in. Do we have a problem with that? We don't typically do that, um, but it's your prerogative, Joni. Sure, Todd, go ahead. Todd? Okay, you're muted there. Okay. I just wanted 15, 20 seconds to follow up on what Richard just said. Um, as a cyclist who rides every day, when I'm trying to get from A to B, I do take Railroad Avenue. It's not that circuitous and I avoid coming through the firehouse a lot that way. Secondly, um, if I were through this, I would probably only be biking seven, eight miles an hour. This is not a high speed through path for anybody. So, so I'm going to confer or confirm the instincts that Richard had. That was all. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, do we have any other questions uh, from any um, one of the commissioners? Are, are we going to go to comments at some point? Uh, we are as soon as we have anybody that wants to speak. So we just need to close the public hearing first, okay. and then you can turn it back yeah. over to the commission. Okay. So at this point, we'll close the um, public comment hearing part, and we will open up for our commissioners to discuss. Okay. Um, go ahead, Mike. Okay, yeah. <clears throat> um, I would just like to really emphasize the need for bicycle parking. Um, we are really shifting in this town to, um, uh, I mean, just full on with electric bikes and so forth, and just the real popularity in bikes. Everybody I'm talking to, people I come across, um, just bike access. I know Todd brought it up. Um, Andre, uh, the Garen brought it up. Um, I think it's really, really vitally important that we have um, plenty of bicycle racks, well-designed. I know we can do that architecturally that makes them look really aesthetically pleasing and um, just really, really encourage people to be uh, bicycling and also walking um, through this park. I think that um, what Todd mentioned about the speed, um, it, I, I think it's going to be a tough, a real tough sell to get people off of bicycles. But if we can have postings of no more than five miles an hour through this area um, and just really, really emphasize that low speed um, because, um, you know, having people off of bicycles walking, we can have all the signs we want. And I think, um, uh, Joni, we talked about this out there by the, um, by the Calipe area. And I remember you made a comment like, good luck, you know, with the signs. And so this kind of falls into that same space of a sign you know, will be probably rejected very quickly by just behavior. So um, that's going to be a touch point. I, I'm sure we'll talk about it in more detail, but clearly plenty of bike racks. That's my call on that. That's all I've got. Yeah, great comment. Uh, okay. Do any of the other commissioners have any um, comments they would like to um, talk about? I would. <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm asking Matt and, and you'll probably, you know, the uh, crushed, um, it, I think it's supposed to be a bike path right in the, um, the existing parking lot, the firehouse that's a, up against specialty auto and stuff. How wide is that? Because that is, seems to be one of the big, um, you know, people don't think it's wide enough. So, um, yeah, so, so that pathway is actually split into like, like you kind of mentioned, there's a decomposed granite section and then there's the concrete section that I, I think Todd had referenced. Right. So I believe the concrete section is eight foot wide and there's a planting strip. And then I think it's a four foot wide decomposed granite section. Is that right, Richard? That sounds right. I know the eight foot is right. And I think the four foot is right too. And now is, is four foot um, the general um, size for a bike path? 
I think the intent so right, there is right now, for the general jogging. class one bike path is a minimum of kind of 10 feet wide and, and two foot shoulders on either side if possible. And so what we're proposing is to continue the design start, you know, design parameters of what we're building right now further down in the transportation corridor, uh, which is a project under construction right off of Bernal and, and Main there. Right. And that's to have a, a minimum 10 foot wide and then have a shoulder. So we've got 10 feet wide with a two foot decomposed granite shoulder as shown in, in the concept plan. Okay, um, one, one of the things uh, down in Pacific Grove they have uh, where um, you, you walk along the, the shore there, they have uh, a, it's, and it's extremely wide. There is uh, the bike path and then there is the uh, walkway. And it is, you know, I mean, you, there's the pedestrian side and there's bike side. And I think it works very, very well. Uh, been there a lot and we don't seem to have any problems. So uh, it would be nice if we would consider something like that because uh, you have both, both pedestrians and bicyclers going at the same time. And it's wide enough, it's open, uh, you don't feel threatened either way. So I, I would um, really strongly suggest that we, we try to do something like that, especially through um, any, any place that has a lot of, of traffic, whether, you know, it, it just opens everything up. Um, so now are we, uh, we're close to public hearing and does anybody wish to make a motion? Um, any more comments? Does anybody else have comments? Yeah. Nobody? Nobody has any more comments. Okay. Um, does anybody want to make a motion? Yeah, I'll just start with making motion that we do accept the um, conceptual plan um, that would um, be looking at the um, flipping the bandstand towards looking towards firehouse. Um, and also I like the fact that there be a safety component with that in just my own comment. Uh, I think there's always been concern with, especially concerts being on a Friday night, the first street traffic being heaviest during that time with commuters that uh, we always are a bit of a risk with uh, people darting between the streets. And I think uh, putting it on the other side, taking away that risk and making it more of a festive area where there could be a gathering uh, and having it complement the firehouse and metal art dairy and kind of a, kind of an area that uh, putting signatures, uh, both the wayside metal art firehouse in continuation with downtown, I think is just all a plus. Um, so for that reason, I would, uh, what I want to put a motion to that, just looking at staff report, um, having accepting the conceptual plan as drawn with the wayside park and the main audience area being uh, stipulated on the map. And um, that would be it, unless I need to add anything else. So Edith, did you get all of that? I, I'll go through the transcript on it because yeah, he sort of went back and forth on different things there. But I think what you're saying is you, you're going with the conceptual plan of bandstand facing the Firehouse Arts Center. Correct, and, and, and with primary focus on being uh, for the community a safer uh, conceptual plan than, current, than currently. Do we have a second on that? I'll second that. Okay, there's been a motion on the floor um, to accept the preliminary uh, drawings for the Wayside and Deluki Park um, and that uh, putting the bandstand um, towards the creek with a second from Mike. And uh, so uh, can I see a hand for, uh, for it? I think we'll need to do a roll call roll vote call. from Edith. Okay. Yeah. okay, go. Okay. So commissioners Chuck Deckett? Uh, yes. Mary Heckle? Yes. 
Ramesh Amadi? Yes. Michael Vickers? Yes. And Chairperson Joni Fields? Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, you know, I just have to find my little piece of paper. And we are at a commission report. So um, bike and pedestrian trail, I had my first meeting and we discussed the uh, intersections uh, and striping and uh, configurations at Bernal and um, First, First Street, Sanol, right there, and also uh, Las Positas. Um, very, very, very interesting. Uh, I certainly have much more to learn about uh, biking, biking around town. Uh, community of character, uh, we are, uh, we did our Martin Luther King uh, breakfast, which we had 110 people uh, that uh, listened to the uh, president of Las Positas College. Um, our uh, luncheon will be uh, May uh, 19th at the Senior Center patio. We're having a um, Mexican uh, theme. And uh, the reason we picked the patio and we're hoping everything works out uh, is that it's open and people will feel much more uh, likely to come in an open air. And we're hoping to get uh, one of the mariachi groups from the uh, school district. And um, so, um, I, I hope that some of you will come and um, participate and, uh, you know, uh, we haven't uh, chosen any, uh, one, anyone yet to acknowledge for their community service yet. Joni, when is that? What's the date on that in time? Uh, May, and you probably won't be able to come, Mike, uh, <laughs> because yeah. it's school time. And, yeah. yeah, it's from 1130 to, to one, one o'clock. Um, I know it's tough, but it's really very, very rewarding. Uh, I can always be sick somehow, you know, just get that charitable, you know, don't mention that to my schools. <laughs> just kidding. Well, you, don't you have a few days that you can use for personal use? I never do it, though. I know. Uh, teachers your age usually don't. <laughs> Sorry, but it's true. Um, so anyway, uh, next is East Bay Regional, and that was Steve Bertrand. Still no meetings for Still that. Still no meeting. Um, Heritage Tree, no meeting. Thank you very much. Uh, Public Arts, none. And the Sports Council. No meeting I for Sports Council. Nothing there. Okay. Um, other brief reports on meetings, conferences, or seminars? Heidi? Nothing from me. Okay, and uh, everyone, um, this coming Saturday out at Muirwood, please attend. Uh, Heidi did suggest that we arrive there as commissioners by 930, so that we're all given a, a fact sheet for us to uh, all be on the same page. And um, I think you will find it, uh, I think last Saturday we found that it was um, very interesting, um, everything that was said. Future agendas, haha, -ha, tour of the Century House. Uh, and that is Mar uh, March what? March 19th at 2 p.m. It's a Saturday, that was the time that, um all the commissioners were able to attend. So we okay. will be there March 19th at 2 p.m. Okay. Real, quick, real quick, Johnny, you missed the matters initiated by the commission. If anybody had anything? The matters initiated by the commission. Oh, sorry about that, Chuck. With you guys helping me through, I'll make it. Uh, does anybody have any concerns? None? Everybody's A-OK? Okay. okay. So now we'll go back and um, 
Heidi uh, informed us at the beginning to please take off the cricket pitch and the pickleball because it was a misunderstanding that it does not come back to us. It goes directly to the council. Okay, and then the LR, and I don't know what this is. Library and Recreation. That's the Library and Recreation Annual Report. I apologize <laughs> for the shorthand. Okay. I think and what happened with this was this was our notes that somehow got transferred onto the agenda. So I apologize if a lot of those things shouldn't, shouldn't have been on there, so. Okay. So um, do we have a motion to adjourn? adjourn? I so moved. Second? I second that. Yay. Thank you, guys. And I appreciate all your uh, correcting of me. I have no problem with it. Um, thank you again. And um, Richard, um, you've been on this project so long. It, um, it, it speaks volumes of patience. And well, thank uh, Matt, you. I, I really appreciate the insightful and careful comments and questions that came from the commission and from the public. Those are really excellent points. And despite my um, sort of defending a position along the way, our, our role is to listen and to accommodate the comments as they come in, um, in consultation with staff, not to defend some plan or something. That's not what we're about. So thank you though. I appreciate that. And it's really wonderful to be working with Pleasanton. There's, you know, there's a lot to be said for the foresight and vision that this city has shown in so many areas, in so many ways, but this, this park is one, um, despite being kind of knocked down a number of times by the agencies, you know, coming up swinging on our, on our side and, and we're, looks like we're getting somewhere. So really appreciate your help on this too. We, we never give up. <laughs> Thank you all. Great first meeting, Joni. Great job in the chair. Good job, Joni. Very well done. Good job, Joni. See you all on Saturday.